Today I'm going to show you how to create a thread shank for shankless buttons when sewing them onto a button band. As always, if you'd like to jump right to a specific point in the video, there are direct links down in the description. One of the final touches to completing a cardigan is sewing on the buttons. If you've ever wondered what sort of thread to use or how exactly to sew a button on so that it isn't too tight, today's video will answer those questions. So let's get started. There are two basic types of buttons. One type of button has holes drilled through the top. This one has four holes, but often they have two holes. And this type of button doesn't have any holes on the surface. Instead, there is a shank on the back side of the button with holes drilled through it, and the button is sewed onto the button band through these holes. When this type of button is sewed, sewn onto the surface of the button band, there is space between the bottom edge of the, bot the back side of the button and the button band, and that allows the button hole band to fit in between here. If you sew this type of a button directly onto the button band, leaving no space between the button and the surface of the fabric, it'll, it's going to create stress on the button and it's going to be difficult to, um, to button the garment together. So here's a button that has holes drilled through the top of the button that sits above the surface of the button band. A shank was created using the thread that sewed the button onto the button band. So in order to place my button, I find the, the matching spot on the button band that corresponds with the button hole. So when, when the garment is buttoned, I want my band to overlap exactly completely. This is where the center of the buttonhole is right here, um, and the buttonhole goes toward this edge. So I want to put the button in the same purl column that is associated with this um, buttonhole. So I'm going to mark this right here so that I can find it later. You have a couple of options for what you use as your sewing thread when you're sewing on a button. Some people want to use their project yarn, but in order to do that, you typically have to separate the plies out if the yarn has been plied. So the yarn that I used for this swatch was, uh, had three plies to it and I separated them out. Um, and here's a single ply. The thing is, it's, this isn't terribly strong as a sewing um, thread. It, it just pulls apart pretty easily. So as you're pulling this repeatedly through the surface of the fabric, it may not be strong enough. You can use needlepoint yarn. I've used that before and you can separate the plies out for that. You can buy that in many different colors. They typically come in two yard lengths. So it's very handy um, when you want trying to match colors. If your buttons are a slightly different color than your fabric or are a contrasting color, you may want to use some sort of thread or yarn that matches the buttons. And there are lots of different choices. This is um, sewing thread for a machine, uh, for machine sergers. It's called woolly nylon. And it's a very stretchy type of fuzzy nylon used to serge knitted fabrics together. So that's one option. Another option is to use the reinforcing yarn that is often used to reinforce sock heels. So it's made of about 75% wool and 25% nylon. It's machine washable. It's thin enough to sew with, but it's also very strong. It comes in a fair number of colors, but it doesn't come in a huge number of colors. And finally, there's just plain sewing thread. I tend to use this the most because I find it, um, it comes in so many different colors and it's easy to match the color of the button. It can be a problem if you're using it to sew buttons onto fabric where the yarn was a very soft, uh, loosely spun, fiber, so the thread may end up cutting the fiber. So you have to kind of keep in mind the entirety of your project. 
Once you have chosen the thread or yarn that you're going to use to sew on your buttons, then you're going to anchor the thread or yarn to the surface of the button band. And you're going to do it uh, on, in one of two ways. If you're using a thread, um, such as the reinforcing yarn or a ply of a needle point yarn or something like that, you're going to want to anchor the ends by weaving them in. So on the back side of the work, you would weave in the tail just as if you were weaving in your project uh, tails. So you can leave a little bit of a tail here. So you, you weave it in so that it, it's, it's anchored really well. So here I've woven in the tail. I've come up this side and back this way and then I've come up to here and now I can bring the yarn to the front where I'm going to sew the butt sew on the button. So I'm using sewing thread to sew my button on and I doubled it and then I've knotted it at the very end. So when I put when I attach sewing thread to the button band, I do it from this right side of the work. So I've, I'm coming through the two knit the, the knit stitch that I have marked and I'm pulling it through. But then what I want to do is go through in between these two strands where the knot is. And that's going to anchor the thread on the top. That leaves the knot right here in between the fabric and the button. So it's hidden by the button and it won't be seen on the back side of the work. Even if the threads could be seen slightly, there won't be any, any knot sticking out anywhere. Then I bring my needle up through the buttonhole and I place it on the fabric. Now what I need to do is add a spacer and a spacer is going to be um, placed across the top of the button and I will be sewing over the top of that spacer as I, uh, as I sew through the holes again and again for this first set of, of holes and then the second set of holes. So the trick is, well, what size should this spacer be? And so one recommendation is that it have the same diameter as the fabric is thick. Now, how, how thick is the fabric? That's a little tricky to figure out. Um, so there are a couple of, of, of things that you can do. Uh, and then you can, try, you can try to guess at what would be a good size for the spacer and sew your first button on and then and then button the fabric and see how that looks. If you think it's a little too loose or a little too tight, then you can use a spacer slightly smaller for the next button and then compare. So don't take the first button out until you've done the second button to compare. So you, a spacer could be a double pointed needle or it could be a yarn needle like this or a one of these smaller yarn needles. I have three different size of yarn needles here and any one of them might be the right one. You're going to need a smaller spacer for thinner yarns and thinner fabrics and a larger one for larger fabrics. So these, these can work really well, but so can uh, double pointed needles. And if you're working with something super bulky, you're going to use a larger double pointed needle. So, so one approach might be, well, use the yarn needle that you would normally use to weave in the ends for the fabric. That would be a starting point. And if you're not sure if something else is bigger or smaller, you can use a needle gauge to see, well, what size is this needle? This is two and a half millimeters um, versus this one, which I think is, is 1.75 millimeters. So that one's a little smaller. You can use, um, so you can use that as a starting point. Uh, you could use a double pointed needle. You could try a toothpick and, and again, use your needle gauge to see what size it is. Another approach might be to compare uh, the, th the, the double pointed needle or whatever it is that you were going to use for a spacer and compare it to, if you look at the V of a stitch, if you look at one of the legs, compare it to the thickness of one of those legs and start with that size of a needle and see if that works well for you.
once you get the first couple of stitches in so that you can anchor the spacer onto the needle, the process is goes a lot smoother. So it's it's anchored on there now. So now I can continue to sew the button on. Okay, so when you've sewn it on enough, then you pull your spacer out. And that allows you to see that you've, you've created some space, but you don't want to just leave the button like that. So now what you do is you bring the thread back up to the surface, and then you begin winding it around. So you want to wind it, wind it around fairly firmly around to create the shaft, so I'm pull, I'm doing it fairly tightly. I'm going to do it so you can see what's going on. So you wrap it around a number of times, and then you can see that I've created this shaft, and it's sitting up here really well on its own. Now I'm going to poke the needle through the shaft several times. And I'm going to go back below and then go back through once or twice. So this should be very secure. If you want to do a knot, you could do a knot very close to um, the shank and then trim it, but I just, I just trim it. So I go very close and I just cut it. Now we can button it. And see how it looks. So now it looks fine. It's 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 not squishing the fabric. It's sitting on, on the surface nicely. So I think that that turned out well. So I used this uh, US one, which is the 2.5 millimeter um, double pointed needle. That's what I used um, for this. So that would be the same. Um, this is just a little bit smaller than this particular yarn. It, it's kind of in between these two yarn needles. So either one of them probably would have been just fine. Um, so you use what you have and see how it works and then move on to the next one. As with virtually all knitting situations, you have lots of choices for how to get to the same end point when it comes to sewing on buttons, including what you use for spacers and the type of thread or yarn you use to sew on your buttons. Knowing what your choices are allows you to take into consideration your project, your preferences, and the materials available to you. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. And you can also join the discussion or ask questions not related to this video in my Ravelry group, Rocks Rocks. And there's a link to that down in the description box below. You can find a playlist of more finishing techniques up here, and if you're interested in my casual Friday videos where I talk about knitting and knitting related topics without demonstrating techniques, you can click on that playlist here. To subscribe to my channel, click over here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.